AEW is officially doing the toilet as Tony Khan has fired CM Punk. But you guys already know that, but I haven't given my thoughts on it on this channel. So I'm going to dedicate most of this AEW coalition. Well, I'm saying most of it. I'm just going to address it at the start. But Tony Khan saying that he's never felt for his life, feared for his life in the security at a wrestling show than he did at All In with CM Punk. And you look at the evidence of like CM Punk and Joe taking pictures after the match and the fact that Jack Perry was sent home and the fact that CM Punk was allowed to stay there. There, there is a rat in Tony Khan's story. He is the rat. The Young Bucks coming out on this coalition show, shaking hands at the end. Matt Hardy bum-licking them. Get this company in the bin. I hope it goes down the shiter, man. It's as simple as that. I've got no love for AEW. You know, as great as great as it may seem, having like two companies rival against each other. You know, AEW's fell well short of the mark troops. It really is that simple. And for me, I would love this company to go to fucking business. I would love CM Punk to come back to WWE and for it to absolutely die a, a sad death. But for me, I don't know if everybody know that. As I've just mangled a spider, quite a big spider actually. I am the man. Deed! Like Tony Khan's company, but yeah, I just think it's an absolute disgrace that Tony, Ka Tony Khan's did this. Um, he's left his only draw, well, I'll say he's left, he's fired his only draw in the entire fucking company, man. He's just scrumpled up the piece of paper, chucked it in the bin, and went, see us later, alligator. And I'm just no having it. I'm no having that. It's just an absolute catastrophe for Tony Khan to do this. But without further ado, guys, we're going to get stuck in the AEW Coalition. We have a bunch of jobber matches. It is the go-home show for All Out, which, of course, is tonight, 3rd of September. Um, and we are live from the United Centre in Chicago, Illinois. But, uh, yeah, so, of course, CM Punk, um, of course, no longer with the company, so his match against Ricky Starks is no longer happening and, uh, yeah, I mean, we're in Chicago, so there is, like, you know, elements of hijackery during this show. Tony Khan got put at the fucking building, no wonder. Um, but, yeah, so it looks like we are going to get some weird sort of match here. Uh, who knows what's going to happen. But then we then get Ricky St St the Dragon Steamboat coming out. Oh, but he came out with his old theme song, his WCW theme. So it looks like we're getting um, Ricky Starks against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Uh, Ricky Steamboat says, everyone knows me as the dragon, but there's another guy! It's the American dragon, Brian Danielson, and this is just weird. Like, they bring this guy back the week after, um, you know, uh, the big massive pay-per-view event in Wembley. Like, seriously, could you not just spare up the guy's recovery to have a match for Wembley? Because I tell you what, it was seriously fucking need it, man, so... Yeah, who, who, who knows what's going to happen here. Is this going to be a decent match between these two? I don't really care, to be honest. But then we get John Moxley. He says that Orange Cassidy is a jobber. He's a cosplay wrestler. And after he did those Canadian Destroyers last week, man, I've just completely and utterly lost total faith in all of that. Uh, Moxley, though, he's a technician of the highest order. I've got to take a, I'm not going to target any of your limbs, me man. I'm going to beat your soul, so to speak. Who knows? <clears throat> Where this match is going to go. Up next, we had the acclaimed and daddy ass taking on Angelo Parker, Matt Menard, and Daniel Garcia. There was a spot in this match where I, I don't know who, between Parker, Menard, or Garcia, which three of, the, three of them it was, but one of them fell face first into the crotch of Billy Gunn and he started wiping his, his fucking dick and his crotch all over their face. Now, albeit, yes, right, the ears were in tights, but, but what is this? What in the fuck is happening to pro wrestling looking at this match? Honestly. Honestly, man. Damn. This was fucking sick. But the acclaimed and daddy ass, of course, when we see Ricky Starks and Big Bill are walking backstage. Who knows what's going to happen. But Starks says, you're going to find out tonight. Well, I'm absolute. Or absolute, not obsolete. <laughs> uh, well, I mean tomorrow night, sorry. Well, tonight, it is tonight, but he said it yesterday, so technically it's tomorrow, but for me and you watching this review, oh, it will be um, tonight. We then have Aussie Open taking on Nick Wayne and Commander. Just a fucking 
throwaway match between jobbers at the end of the day and uh, yeah, Aussie Open managed to pick up the victory. Nick Wayne is a fucking jobber, so in steps Christian Cage just to bury him a wee bit more. You've Darby Allen out there as well. Christian comes out, starts burying him. He's like, ah, Nick Wayne, I forgot to ask about your mom. Maybe I'll slide into your hard DMs. And then he says, Darby, are you taking care of him because you feel bad for him? And then he says, Wayne should bring a towel tomorrow to throw in. I really hope Christian wins. That is all I'm going to say. Christian needs to win. We then have... Um, Wheeler Utah and Cesaro backstage and this is just fucking garbage because like oh congrats congratulations Eddie Kingston you you won you beat uh, you beat Wheeler Utah amigo you beat Wheeler Utah hey, hey, man uh, uh, yeah and then Shabita whips out Google Translate on his phone that says you both suck fucking brilliant because the guy can't speak English ha ha that is quality uh, backstage promo with um Saraya and Ruby Soho who gives a fuck man I don't care uh, but next is something quite intriguing. We have got Dennis Rodman getting welcomed to the ring. Now, of course, we knew this was going to happen, but it's still a bit weird to actually see it uh, take place, to be honest. So Dennis Rodman comes out to the ring. Um, Tony Giovanni asks him, what are you doing in AEW? But then interrupting him, we've got Jeff Jarrett, Satnam Singh, Sat Satnav Singh, <laughs> uh, Sanjay Dutt, Jay Lethal, and Karen Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett says that him and Rodman were part of one of the greatest factions of all time and it was too sweet and it was also for life. Rodman then says, it's a great day to be in Chicago and I love AEW. Uh, so who knows what's going to happen here. Like, <laughs> decent line for Rodman. He says Sha Shaquille O'Neal was that big and I beat his ass. So who knows what's going to happen. Now apparently um, we, we are getting a match with, you know, Rodman in their corner to take on this band of fucking jobbers and I will only really believe that if I see it Dennis Rodman it's good seeing him like I, I, I like Dennis Rodman when I was wa when I watched WCW back in the day big Dennis Rodman what a guy uh, he, he just started he just you know he was great seeing him out there with, like Bischoff Hogan the Outsiders etc but now I mean like then he was in his prime basketball day and all this mad shit orgies etc maybe he's still doing orgies I'm not too sure I'm pretty sure he's actually got his wife's name tattooed on his fucking head these days uh, but maybe I am wrong about that one we then have the outcast taking on Chris Statlander ho ho Dr. Britt Baker and Akira Shida the outcast win just a generic tri triple you know trios match you know Soraya the outcast boring fucking bastards at the end of the day who really knows we then have powerhouse hobbs taking on gpa spine buster good night he wins but then miro comes out to the ring down now oh, miro hits the ring both men are brawling and um, hobbs gets clo clotheslined over the top uh so who knows what's going to happen here who knows what's going to happen What's going to happen? Are these two going to have a match? I don't really know. I don't really care. Because they're all leaving me. In despair. Anyway, Jay White with Juice Robertson and the Guns take on Dax Harwood with Cash Wheeler. So we've got a lot of guys out there. A lot of guys in this match that just fucking suck, damn it. Uh, JR comes out, of course. Good news for JR. He is uh, officially cancer-free, so... Round of applause to good old JR, wrestling, a real wrestling fucking legend. Uh, it's good to hear that. I mean, this match, people will overrate this match. Oh, great stuff. Jay White against Dax Harwood. Fucking pish, man. Jay White wins. Am I supposed to really care? Then it just ends in a big brawl. The Young Bucks come out. This is them making a coalition debut. And to just make things worse, the show goes off the air with with the Young Bucks shaking hands, guys. Shaking hands.
But it's just a disgrace. I mean, it's just obviously a dig at CM Punk. It's like, look, we won. Get it right up you. And that's, what, that's what's making Matt Hardy get hard in his pants. Fuck Matt Hardy. Him and his brother. Two junky bastards. You did put on some good matches back in the day, but fuck you all. It's all about Team CM Punk. And uh, so, yeah. You know what? If you were all in, that could make it even more special because that's probably the last time CM Punk's ever going to be in the wrestling business, to be honest. I, I, I mean, he might go to WWE. I want him to go to WWE, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't go to WWE, guys. So anyway, leave your thoughts down below. Until next time, I'm going to give this AW Coalition a minus 2 out of 10. Go fuck yourself, AW. Peace. Oh, hell yeah.